back. Well, hungry. And uh, <laughs> this leave the rabbit alone. Really? Don't touch him. <laughs> Rabbits are friends. Rabbits are not food. And why do we know that? Because Apollo I on my plate gives you information besides just food. So here in Kulu, we're here to tell you about the Angora rabbit. What I can already tell you is, it's got extremely thick fur, extremely sharp claws, and the only way to hold it is if you pull its ears back and catch it by the scruff of the neck and support it underneath. It's a little cutie. It's got this pink wiggly nose, really beautiful pink wiggly eyes, and it gives you delightful wool for which it doesn't have to be killed. It can be shorn and then made into shawls and other exciting things. The word Angora is said to have come from Ankara in Turkey, which is where this breed is found. Now, remember you have Angora goats, where you don't get Angora wool, you get more hair from them. You have Angora rabbits, you even have Angora cats. But here, all along National Highway 21, you'll see places which are advertising these guys. And what they do is they comb them, they shear them, and they get what is arguably the softest, finest natural fiber and warmest too for making shawls and stoles and things. Ooh, my fingers are getting hot. Of course, the wool comes off easy as you can see. And the other thing that you can do with rabbits is make pie out of them, but that's not what we're here for. <laughs> but they were first imported here from West Germany in 1965, and they've been here ever since. This young man came on board the first aircraft with lots of rabbits and he brought them over here. And you know what? By the time the flight took off from there and it landed here, they'd already tripled in number because we all know rabbits can breed really prolifically. Now, here's something more interesting about the Angora wool. They claim that it's really good to cure rheumatism, arthritis, lumbago. Uh, are you sure I can't eat it? Yes, I'm sure you can't eat it. Not even a little bit? No, rabbits are not food, rabbits are friends. Maybe just a reggie rabbit's food. No? No. Okay, but there is another creature that you can catch over here and that you can eat. Let me tell you about it. Come on, I'll tell you about it. So, rabbits, not meant to be eaten, but... National Highway 21, the river Bias will accompany you as you drive down. What will also accompany you is these little dhabas all along the way. And the one ingredient that they all have in common, this is something that they all serve, is fresh trout. Besides the trout though, you get lots of other stuff to eat. For example, the Bella River Banks where we've stopped offers Indian, Chinese, Tandoori, Italian, Continental and even etc. Have you ever eaten etc? Sometimes, uh, but it's uh, not very nice, it's uh, etc. But what makes these places really special is the real estate. Location, location, location. Right by the river, you can hear the sounds, it's very relaxing. And you can have a bite and then you can have a little nap. And you can wash your hands in the river as soon as you finish eating like that. Come, we'll show you, come on, come on! There are times when even we, with all this food in front of us, get distracted by the surroundings and it's very hard not to. I mean, look at this. And this table, which is the furthest out you can get at this restaurant, you can actually sit with your feet in the water. Look, you can dip your feet. The only problem is the water is icy cold, so after about three seconds, you have to pull it out. There are two distinct advantages of this freezing cold water. The first one, of course, is that the trout is fresh and it really is. And the second one, you can chill your water as you sit down and you can have a really cold drink of water along with your food. If you're vegetarian, you still have enough options here. Now, further up towards Manali or back there towards Kuru, you'll get all the continental international food. Here, you can have your pick of all the Indian food. I've got paneer burji, I've got mutter and mushroom ki sabzi, and I've got a dal with a very spicy tadka. No tandoor here, so the rotis are made on the tawa. I've ordered two kinds of fish. One is the fried trout, which is right over here, deep fried in oil with a generous sprinkling of masala all over it. And the other one is this, the grilled trout as they call it. It's cooked in a sort of oven, again with the same masala as pretty much, mm, and it is fresh. Trout is a very delicate, almost dry meat, 
It goes really well when you cook it with spice. And this one is perfectly done. Oh, if you don't stop in Malali and eat the trout by the river, you're going to be missing out a real experience, I can tell you that. You might get lots of trout to eat in Manali, but trout is really not off Manali. So here's your Apollo Go The Distance question. Where was trout introduced into India from? I'll give you a small hint. It first came into Kashmir and then everywhere else. I'll give you another hint. It didn't come on its own. It was brought. If you think you know the answer, get onto our Facebook page. And if you get the answer right, you might have a chance to be on the show. There is, of course, more to do than just eat food along these dhabas. What? This beautiful river offers you an opportunity to do what is called a river crossing. There are these cables strung up across. You can hang on the cables and cross the river. Why? To get to the other side. But there are two kinds of river crossers, my friend. One is those who will bounce up and down as they are crossing the river and daintily touch the water. Oh, it's cold! Ah! And there are the others who will cross the river and drown while doing it. Which is never fun. Since we fall into that category, we will sit here and eat fish while other lighter people cross the river. It's not just the people here that need to be lighter if they want to survive. The food needs to be lighter. All these three dishes, the dal, the sabzi and the paneer, have basically the same tadka, which involves a lot of oil and even more spices. So, if you come here, you don't feel like eating really oily heavy food, you can also eat the chaat because they have a little chaat place there. Or you can have a cup of tea and really enjoy this place for what it's worth, which is the view and the water. If you're going to choose between the fried and the grilled trout, I would suggest you go with the grilled one. It's a lot drier, a lot firmer, a lot more subtle and a lot tastier. The fried one loses some of its character with all that oil floating around. I've taken a couple of bites of it. Uh, I don't like it as much as I like the grilled one. Mm. But they are both very good. Very. Rivers are so beautiful, aren't they? They provide you food, they provide you entertainment. You can cross them and bounce in the middle. You can even fish in them, as that gentleman at the back is doing. I, of course, prefer my fish brought to the table and I don't want to work for them. Which brings us to Rocky and Mayu's report card. Taste. Five. Six. Ambience. Nine. Ten. Service. Eight. Eight. And value for money? Seven. Seven. This trout is for 250 rupees each. It may not seem like much, but for a little roadside place like this, you'd expect it to be a little cheaper considering it comes from right here. But it is really good. But 500 rupees for a dhaba meal, it's a little out of my league. So I've given it a little lower mark. We're paying? No, we'll just jump into the water and swim. It's too cold. It's too cold! When you're coming up from Mandi, don't turn left and go into the tunnel towards Kulu and Manali. Instead, go straight on National Highway 21, then get on to State Highway 11, and then come through lots of really little narrow winding roads with tons of traffic to get to this beautiful place, Gosheni. <laughs> <laughs> 